Prostate cancer is the most commonly diagnosed solid cancer, excluding skin cancers amongst men. Here are some facts with regards to the incidence of prostate cancer. In the United States, this year it is estimated that around 315,000 men will have a new diagnosis of prostate cancer. Approximately 30,000 of these men will die from the disease. Here in Australia, those corresponding figures are around 20,000 new diagnoses of prostate cancer per year and around 3,000 prostate cancer-related deaths. Hi, my name is Dr. Charles Chabert. I'm a urologist and the director of the prostate uh, clinic here on the Gold Coast in Australia. In today's video, I wanted to highlight for you five common myths with regards to prostate cancer. Myth number one, prostate cancer only affects older men. While it is true that as men progress through life, the probability of developing a prostate cancer is greater, and the peak incidence certainly in my practice of being diagnosed with a prostate cancer is around 65 years of age. Despite that, younger men can be diagnosed with prostate cancer, and that is particularly true amongst affected members uh, of a particular family. So if there is a strong family history of prostate cancer, or if people have known genetic predispositions such as the BRCA1 or the BRCA2 gene, it is far more common to see a prostate cancer diagnosis in, an, uh, in a younger man uh, in that uh, cohort. Myth number two, prostate cancer always causes symptoms. Now, to dial down in, into this, many men that come and see me are worried about the probability of them having prostate cancer when they notice that they're developing some urinary issues. In particular, they may notice that their flow is getting a little weaker. They might be getting up more commonly at night to pee. They might notice that more often than not, they have a sense of urgency that when they need to go and pee, they need to do it quite quickly. For the majority of these men, the development of urinary symptoms is associated with BPH. That's benign prostatic hyperplasia, and that's the benign enlargement of the prostate that uh, happens as men progress through life. Prostate cancer usually, not always, but usually occurs in the outer part of the shell. And remember, the prostate is shaped like a donut, and we pee through a hole in the middle of the prostate. So cancers that occur near the shell of the prostate are away from the outlet pipe or away from the urethra. And as a result, these growths need to attain significant size before they're likely to cause any impact or impingement on the emptying of the bladder. Therefore, a significant proportion of prostate cancers that I actually see are asymptomatic. And this really underpins why it's so important to have a regular blood test or a PSA test if you're over the age of 50 and you're interested in being proactive about your health. Myth number three, a high PSA test always means that you have prostate cancer. So to dial down into this a little bit, the PSA test is the blood test that we do to screen for prostate cancer. It's not a perfect test by any stretch of the imagination, but it is a good first port of call to get a crude assessment on the overall health of someone's prostate and their crude probability of having prostate cancer. One of the challenges that we see is that a PSA test can go up for different reasons. It can be increased if you have a big prostate, if you have inflammation or infection inside the prostate, or if someone has an abnormal growth or prostate cancer. So you can see that the test itself lacks specificity and more than one cause can produce an elevated PSA. Thankfully, over the last decade or so, we've had improvements in diagnostics when it comes to highlighting if someone has prostate cancer or not. And the cornerstone, certainly in Australia and in Europe with regards diagnosing prostate cancer, is using a multi-parametric MRI scan. It lets us know the size, the shape of someone's prostate, but it also tells us if there is an index lesion, index lesion which raises the suspicion that someone could have an abnormal growth. Myth number four, prostate cancer grows so slowly it doesn't require any treatment. To get to the heart of this, and really a saying that has been around for a long, long period of time is that men die with prostate cancer 
rather than from prostate cancer. And whilst, whilst this can be true for many situations, the important thing to be aware of is that there are different types of prostate cancer. One of the ways that we categorize a new diagnosis of prostate cancer is with something called the Gleason score. Now, to understand that, the Gleason score is a uh, a, a number that is attributed to a particular type of prostate cancer following a biopsy. So if we take a step back, someone may have an elevated PSA that might lead to an MRI scan. If we see a target lesion on an MRI scan, that might lead to a biopsy. And you'll see in one of our previous videos that there's been a real evolution in how we do a prostate biopsy. But in essence, we get a little core or a piece of tissue from a suspicious lesion in the prostate. We send it to the lab. The first question that they'll answer, it, uh, answer for us is whether or not the features uh, fulfill the criteria for a prostate cancer diagnosis. If the answer to that question is yes, the next step really is to look at the architecture of the disease that they are seeing. So the pattern of the cells on the biopsy and attribute a score to it. The Gleason score has got two numbers, the most predominant pattern followed by the second most predominant pattern to give us an overall score. That score ranges from six at its least aggressive through to 10 at its most aggressive. A Gleason 6 cancer is an indolent or a non-aggressive cancer and really for almost all men does not require treatment. These are the slowly growing prostate cancers. These are the ones that men die with rather than from. If men have a higher Gleason score or more aggressive prostate cancer, then depending on their age, their projected longevity, and their overall fitness and health and well-being, all of that gets put into the mix to determine whether or not someone should have treatment, or really we can just observe someone's prostate cancer. The final myth, myth number five, is that prostate cancer treatments always cause severe side effects. Now, whilst this may be true, historically, there have been huge advancements to how we manage prostate cancer really over the last uh, couple of decades. Still today in 2025, the cornerstone of how we manage prostate cancer is with either surgery or alternatively radiotherapy. There are some newer emerging or experimental treatment options that look at treating just an abnormal spot within the prostate on its own rather than treating the whole prostate. And the potential benefit to these treatments really is a reduction in the potential side effect profile from treatments. It should be noted, however, that the individuals that are suitable for these minimally invasive experimental slash emerging treatment options really is a uh, a small subset of the overall group of men who do have a prostate cancer diagnosis. As I highlighted, the mainstay really is surgery, which in 2025 is a robotic-assisted radical prostatectomy, in essence, a type of keyhole surgery to remove the prostate and the seminal vesicles. The two key side effects that the majority of men worried about are the impact that surgery may have on urinary control and sexual function. Now, whilst the majority of men do experience disruptions in these, the recovery for the majority of men, depending on how old and how well they are and their prostate and their disease profile, all of that plays into the mix with regards the speed with which men will recover and the completeness with which they will recover. And that is true both from a continence point of view and also a sexual function point of view. For more details with regards to the pros and cons of surgery, please have a look at one of our previous videos that highlights that. If you have an experience with regards to surgery or uh, a friend or a family member of yours has gone through this or is thinking uh, about their treatment options, please drop us a comment or a line below so that we may discuss it further. The alternative to surgery is radiotherapy, and one of the concerns with radiotherapy historically was the potential toxicity or the damage that radiation treatment could cause to adjacent structures. Now, the prostate is located deep within the pelvis. It's below the bladder and just in front of the bowel, and radiation treatment previously wasn't quite as focal or targeted as it currently is. And that ran the risk really of causing uh, significant side effects from a bladder point of view and a bowel point of view. As I said, there have been huge improvements in how we deliver radiotherapy, particularly over the last five to 10 years. We use a combination now of fiducial markers and a uh, space 
uh, a water-based spacer which we inject in between the prostate and the front wall of the bowel. And it's a combination of these approaches that allow us to be more targeted and to try to reduce the probability of significant side effects following that treatment. I hope this video was of benefit for you. If, you, if it provided benefit, please subscribe, like the channel, and have a look at our other videos for more content with regards to everything related to your prostate. Thanks again.